Google Drive is the home of everything that you want to do with the G Suite. And this is your starting place when you want to use Google Classroom. What I suggest you do is you make folders for each of your subjects or classes that you're going to be using or year groups. To do that, click new in the top left corner, then folder. Just like that, for example. Now what you'll find is it's really easy to lose files quickly if you don't keep your folders organized. So what I recommend is when you want to open an application, let's say you want to create something for year eight, I'd open the year eight folder, then I'd click new, and then I'd open the app that I want to use. And you have a lot of different ones here. I'm going to say that the main ones you'd probably be using are docs and slides. But in saying that, my favorite is definitely Google Sites. But for this, we're just going to create a simple Google Doc. I'm just going to add in a title. And we'll pretend that I filled that full of very important information. Now, back in my Google Drive, that will have actually saved directly into that year eight folder. So I don't have to go looking for it again next time. So essentially, you want to make your class material that you're going to have students doing within Google Drive like that. Once you've made it, you'll go to Google Classroom. Now to create a class in Google Classroom, you click the plus button up the top right and you click create class. You can name it whatever you want, add a room in. I usually just add a class name. Now I've got a couple of ones I made in here earlier as examples, but let's just open this most recent one and we'll look at the different types of posts you can do in Google Classroom. This is what it looks like when you open it. Now, the first thing you'd want to do is invite students. So you go to people. Now, to invite students, if you're in the classroom with them, click the cog up here. Then you've got this code here and click display. And they can put in that code and sign up for your class. Now, if they're not in the classroom with you, what you want to do is this and then invite them via their email address, which is probably what a lot of you will be doing. When we come back to the stream, this is the place where you pretty much just announce things. You create announcements here. So you might say, hey guys, a reminder that your assignment's due next Friday, something like that. So it's just a simple post. Or you might say, hey, I found this cool YouTube video. Check it out. Um, you could attach anything like Nyan Cat for 12 hours. Brilliant. There you go. And that would be an announcement, but there's no actual work for them to do. It's just something you want them to see. If you have work you want them to do, you click on this classwork page. Then we click create and we have different types of posts here. Now, let's say you have a couple of year seven classes. You don't always have to reinvent the wheel every time. You can reuse a post from another classroom. Now I put something into example one earlier and I would just click reuse. And that will allow me to then pull up this assignment from another class. But let's have a look what's in this assignment page in general. So we can add things to an assignment, usually from Google Drive. Let's say I wanted to give them that example document before. Now I have a few options of how I can give it to them. I can make sure they can all just view it so that means like for an assessment notification or something you just want them to see, you choose students can view file. But let's say you wanted them to each have a copy like a template for an assessment, you would click make a copy for each student. Let's say you had a small senior class that you wanted to all work in a document together, you would say students can edit file. Now it's really important that if you want them to all have their own copy, you have to do that when you make the assignment. You can't go back in later and edit it. You have to basically start a new post again. So I'd say make a copy for each student. I can make it graded or ungraded. I can add a due date. Let's say next Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day that was. Next Wednesday. I can add in a time. I can say, let's say our class is at 10 a.m. I'll make it 10 a.m. And I can make a topic too. So I could say term one. 
Now, for marking it from home, for the, just their general classwork, obviously you want to be checking in with them how they're going in their work, but it's not like it's out of 20 or anything. I have a very simple marking criteria. I make it out of three. Three means you did it really well. Two means you did it. One means you did it, but it needed improvement. Zero means you didn't do it. And you can also include a rubric. So I'll create a rubric. So my criteria title would be the worksheet. Then I could make it out of three. So I'll add each of those in. I'll call it hi. And my description would be task completed to a high standard. Two, medium task completed to a satisfactory standard and low task needed improvement so just really simple criteria now this isn't for an assessment task this is just their regular classwork it means from home i can just give them a really easy idea of where they're at one two or three and then i'll need to click save So now it's got a really simple marking criteria. Now, this is cool as well. Let's say you wanted to post that to two classes. I can post that in example th two and example three. I could also, if I was posting to just one class, give it to specific students. So let's say you had half the class you wanted to do this, half the class you wanted to do something else. Or if you've got a single student that needs adjustments, you can also do this kind of thing for them. I want to post to two classes now. I can include the title and instructions. And then I assign. That will then take me back to the classwork tab. And if I go back to the stream, it will also be the most recent post I've done. Now when students open it up, instructions appear like this. Then on the right hand side, they have a section that says your work and their document appears underneath that. Make sure it's really clear to students where they need to find their work. And I always say it's on the right hand side underneath your work. Once you've got students submitting their work, which this is just an example, so I don't have any actual students in here. They will appear in this section here. Their names will appear down the left. And then when you click on their names, it'll be really easy to give them those marks one, two or three. And you can also then give them a private comment back. From here, it'll be really easy to open up their work to see how they've been going. Basically, they'll appear here like a grid. So that's if you want to do a worksheet. Another thing in here that's really useful are quizzes. And you can even do self-marking quizzes. So to do that, you go back onto the Classwork tab, click Create, Quiz Assignment. Or alternatively, if you've already made a Google form, you just do that off, um, you just attach it off your Google Drive. It'll just open up here as a blank quiz. We'll click on this to be able to edit it. So right now it's just a blank quiz. I'll give it a title and then I'll make some questions. So I've got a couple of questions here and I need to add in options for them. Now you'll notice there's different formats for the types of questions that you want. So you can do say multiple choice, you know, a simple yes or no. You can do drop downs or check boxes, which means you can actually add in other options as well. Check boxes are really good if you're doing survey so people can add in an other option. But for quizzes, multiple choice is really the way you wanna go. Um, now you can do quizzes where they can write in responses um, but then it becomes much more difficult to have it self-marking. Um, if you want to just do a really quick snapshot of how they're going, a self-marking quiz is really great to do that. And I use multiple choice for that. I do use short answer questions when it's something really straightforward, like a year. So something like, what year were the Olympics on in Sydney? Because there's only one answer to that. So it has to be 2000. So it can actually self-mark. You can also do things like add in 
a place for them to do a file upload. So let's say you're doing an art class where they needed to do some Photoshop work. They could actually upload that work via this form. Now to make it a quiz, click up here in settings. I always like it to collect email addresses and I always like them to get a response receipt so they know that they've submitted it. Then I'll go to quizzes. I want to make sure this is a quiz. Now, if you've got school Chromebooks that you want them to lock mode so they can't Google other things, it's literally locked in there. You'll turn that on. But if you've got students on PCs, you just leave that. Um, this means that they'll receive their mark immediately and I want that. Now, down here, I don't want them to get the correct answer straight away because if they don't get it all right, I want them to try again. So I'm going to turn that off. Now, when I come in here and click on this question, I've got an answer key. Now, I choose the correct answers and I assign a point value. Now that I've made that, that will actually already be saved, ready to go on here. So I'd make that my quiz. My instruction would be complete the quiz and I'd assign that to the class. I can add a topic back in, um, due date, all of that, um, whatever you want, assign it to multiple classes, to specific students and I just click assign. Now how you get your results is back in this quiz, if I go to responses, all your responses will come up here. You'll be able to go through individual student responses. But a really good way to look at them all over is in this. You click create spreadsheet and that will actually put it into a Google Sheet automatically. It'll import their email address, what their score was and a copy of their responses too. And it's just a really great way for students to get a snapshot of how they're going along the way. And those are the main things I think you need to know to get started in Google Classroom.